Have you ever wondered how they do it? Behind every great piece of art is a story, a person with experience, skills, and prized creative secrets. We've convinced some of Malta's most prominent contemporary artists to give us an exclusive behind the scenes look at the making of their work and to open up their process as they bring new original art to life. The Open Art Studio series offers a rare glimpse into how art is made and is dedicated to art lovers, artists and aspiring artists alike. The picturesque Upper Baraka Gardens in Valletta are perhaps best known for their dramatic vantage point overlooking Malta's historic Grand Harbour and panoramic views of the centuries-old three cities in Fort St Angelo. I'm Laura Swale and I'm here today to meet local artist Mark Schembri, who's going to paint it. I live in Malta and uh, I feel a passion for whatever is Maltese, the positive side. For sure, as the uh, marvellous views uh, we have in Malta. And I like to uh, produce them uh, in painting. And obviously, there are the negative side, uh, sides of our country. But I do love my country uh, very much. So I think the love will uh, be um, uh, produced in my painting all along. I take photos. And then I come to the studio and start painting from the photo. Mark's studio is in Floriana, a 10 minute walk from the gardens. He shares it with his partner Nancy, also a painter, and their cats. As an artist, Mark's very well established in Malta. He's been painting and exhibiting for more than 20 years now, and he's known locally for being very passionate and also quite outspoken, both in life as well as in his art. Mark's artwork reflects his broad range of interests, and while he likes to paint landscapes and architecture, he's equally at home with religious or political subjects. Mark originally studied graphic design and has since worked as an illustrator as well as a fine artist. As a result, his portfolio is exceptionally diverse. I joined Mark at his studio to find out more about him and to see how he makes his distinctive work. It's very hard to classify you as an artist. We can't put Mark Schembri in a box. How would you describe your style? <laughs> my style. You can't grab my style and put it in a box, as you said. Um, um, I think versatility uh, was there all along. And uh, there was a time when I thought it was something bad. I don't have one particular direction, you know? And even art critics criticized me for that. And I, I, literally, I, I, I thought I, I had something that I should correct somehow, but I couldn't. It's like cooking, you know? Today, you feel like eating tempam, but not tomorrow. Tomorrow, you want fish and chips, maybe. Art is like that for me. I find that uh, quite a good metaphor um, to explain art. What is art for me? The fact is that uh, when uh, we eat something, it's uh, every day a different recipe. So the mood that you're in is really important in, sure. in your artwork? Absolutely, yes. Your art is kind of a genre defying, your subject matter is very diverse. But you've got a particular fondness for landscapes. Why is that? I have a particular fondness, not just for landscapes. I have on social issues uh, the same um, fondness. What I think is important is that you play your game in whatever you're good at. I can't speak of social issues in Honduras. I live in Malta.
how do you actually begin? How, how do you decide what to paint and how do you start? There is no hard and fast rule in my case. Do you consider composition, scale, focal points? All those are very, very important. Um, even the uh, proportions and composition, yes, those are essential things that uh, I do take care of them when, when I uh, design, because the design is uh, everything. If there's something bad in the design, then you can't uh, correct whilst you're painting. I think uh, graphic art uh, helped me a lot to um, understand better how I should um, design well. And uh, my paintings, I think they look a bit uh, more like the graphic design I studied more than uh, other paintings in general. Because I like uh, blocking in colors. I found that in my case it would be spicier in my career to try even opposite ways to uh, start and finish a painting. There were times that I sketched in first the design and then obviously you start putting in the colors slowly slowly but very often and I tend to love it more somehow I like to uh, first fill in with uh, various colors and then uh, I sketch in the design afterwards. Sometimes I don't choose the, the, those particular colors I'm, I'm going to use. I just um, find the, 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 the first color in, in hand. Ah, oh, the orange, all right. Even in the sky, for example, or, or uh, in a boy's face, orange. Yes, try it. Then, once you're um, uh, working and going into further details, you can integrate that orange, or else, if you really don't like it, cover it if you can. But it helps you, even, I think, in, in thinking outside the box. You don't have to have the flesh color to paint a face. How do you inject personality into your, into your paintings? It's all in being in line with the mood I have at that particular moment. Throughout, there's my personality coming out, my character. I would choose that those particular colors, styles, techniques, so on and so forth, as if um, I'm choosing that particular word, not the other, whilst talking to you. In my case, it's all about spontaneity, yes. A lot of your work has these beautiful brush strokes and dry brush techniques, texture, a bit of collage here and there. How do you decide where to put that creativity and where to keep things tight? You're very uh, true to life with your drawing, so we recognise the places in your images. So you keep that real. That has to be uh, real, yes. But where you can take artistic licence and liberty. Sure. Yes, th that's, that, that is the recipe. Um, keep it recognisable as a theme. You know that you, uh, you're looking at a Valletta scene, for example. But then uh, the artistic licence com comes in and that, that's very important for me. That's why I use various different colours which are, aren't there in reality. When I'm working on an original of mine, I'm just in uh, the process of experimenting. 
So I do like to have um, my things uh, near me, my uh, absolute uh, most important paint is acrylics. Uh, most often I, I paint in acrylics. But there is a particular shape somewhere that it's going to be texturized, for example, or painted in inks. That's how I um, work without uh, no, much planning, you know? And there wouldn't be uh, a particular logic. I think uh, in painting we can do things without logic. I tried various uh, styles and uh, techniques and uh, once you're there trying and experimenting, automatically, I think, uh, you would find that uh, you're more into using watercolors, for example, than other media. I think it, it has to be, you speak of them as in metaphors, like, like spices. And, a recipe, you know? I think uh, it's all about being authentic. And when you uh, tend to focus on being authentic in life, by default, you're going to be expressive because what you're doing, what you're producing is coming from the heart. What would you say to aspiring artists or even your fellow artists to give them <laughs> some inspiration? I think um, two things are important um, uh, and they are somehow the opposites of each other but uh, it's like the yin yang um, uh, both of them are important to make the perfect circle. The academic side you have to uh, study a lot um, uh, the proportions, how you design. And uh, the other thing, creativity, yes. You have to find yourself. You find your tastes. You have different tastes than mine, for sure. So uh, it's important that you find yourself, your tastes, your moods, your personality, and uh, you go on from there. The series is brought to you by Allura. Allura works with leading local artists to showcase outstanding art and to show you what goes into making it. For original paintings by some of Malta's most sought after artists, visit the Allura Art Collection at www.alluraart.com. <laughs>